I know I'm a little late to this one, but life, am I right? Look, I liked it. It was decent. But I won't lie that I do feel disappointed at how it was handled in a lot of ways. Spoilers from here on out. This is your warning. I honestly don't think The Dial of Destiny is a bad film, but I do think it's an unnecessary one in the grand story of Indiana Jones. Some may argue that for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I get it, but that one gave Indy the happy ending with a family he didn't even know he wanted, while teasing possibilities maybe for the torch to be picked up by his capable son one day. I like that film more than most, and it's hard not to admit that that ending wasn't anything but sweet for the character. So what does Dial of Destiny add to that? Not much, honestly, right off the bat. It's decided that Indiana Jones needed to be old, depressed, alone, and his family life shattered by the death of his son and the separation from his wife. Sound familiar to another Lucasfilm movie? Yep, it's eerily similar to Han Solo in the sequel trilogy. Sure, they're not a one-to-one, -one, but it's there. That comparison is not off the table. Killing off Shia LaBeouf's Mo Williams or Mutt Jones feels like a little bit of a slap in the face so they didn't have to bring Shia LaBeouf back. Or maybe he didn't want to come back, we don't know for sure. Who knows? It's compelling that his death happens in the Vietnam War, and I get that stuff happens for real in life. But for Indiana Jones' marriage to also be shattered as well, feels like too much after such a happy ending. I felt frustrated at the trope that there's this need in Hollywood nowadays to make legacy characters, shadows of their former selves, failures, tragic figures, just to be interesting or deconstruction, and I don't think that was needed here at all. The sequel trilogy was guilty of this with almost all of its characters that were from the old Star Wars movies. Then you take something like Top Gun Maverick, which still makes them flawed people, but they are complete failures in all that they do. Maverick is a great example of how to do it correctly in a way that's compelling for me. In Dial of Destiny, it leads to an ending I was ready to hate, but then it surprised me. It went with the happiest ending it could for this story. It brought Marion back and introduced marital reconciliation for Indiana Jones. Crystal Skull did the work to bring them back together. This decided to destroy that and redo it. But I'm glad they chose to end it in that fashion with them finding each other again. There's a sweetness there and you don't often see the relationships get repaired like that on Hollywood films. Not to the extent of committing to each other once again or it's hinted at. Looking at you, Han and Leia. I was very concerned that Indy would stay in the past and die since thematically I can see it fitting as he dies in an important part of history since he loves history so much. But I'm glad they saw that wasn't the way to go. Honestly, this idea was hired to begin with, making him the way he was, but at least they found some way to bring him back to a happy-ish ending. I still think killing Mug Williams was unnecessary, as is probably the movie as a whole. It even has the Raiders of the Lost Ark problem, where you remove Indiana Jones and the villains still fail. I mean, it's kind of fun to think about and talk about, but it's like, again? So let's just crank through the rest of the issues I had because I do want to talk about what I liked, but there are a lot more issues. Antonio Banderas is in an Indiana Jones movie for all of five minutes, and he's absolutely wasted. What a travesty. There's a huge opportunity for Short Round to be mentioned by Indiana Jones when Helena brings up her sidekick's backstory, and it doesn't happen. Just why? I wish Short Round was in the movie too. He could have been a fun addition. And Helena Sidekick, I don't even remember his name, which I feel bad about. I don't feel like he was developed, he was just kind of there. The film was too long, lots of stuff could have been cut, such as an entire subplot about Indy being framed for murder, which just never gets brought up again and it's never resolved. Why is it even in the movie? A John Williams on a bad day is still better than most composers. Outside of the main old themes, I found the music fairly forgettable and that was disappointing. The action is fun, but the CGI is iffy and there are way, way too many chase sequences. Whether on foot, multiple cars and all, it got ridiculous at a certain point. Some could have been trimmed or cut altogether. Not to mention, but because of bloat, the pacing is off and parts really drag and feel slow. And while de-aging with AI and all is cool technology, and this is one of the better examples I've seen of that de-aging tech, I just don't love the idea. You have a young Harrison Ford with a face that doesn't look quite right, like it's made of rubber or plastic, it's too smooth. Liking the skin detail, a normal face would, so you would think, wow, that looks good, but you never don't think about it because it's always obvious and noticeable what it is. It was better when he put the hat on though. Furthermore, it's old Harrison Ford's voice, which does not match up with the younger face. That took me out of it too. But shifting to the positives, the absolute highlight of the film beyond the ending is the flashback prologue. This felt like a classic 20 to 25 minute Indiana Jones adventure with the most exciting set pieces, humor, action choreography, situational tension, and classic MacGuffins, plus Nazi villains. Take away the uncanny valley de-aging and it functions almost as a perfect standalone indie tale. I found myself wishing that was the whole movie, to be honest. But for all its flaws, James Mangold is a fantastic director that shows through and through with the camera work, 
editing, and blocking of the action. The performances are strong, Harrison Ford in particular being more vulnerable than I'm used to him being in these types of roles. And Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, succeeds in making Helena difficult to like at first. Also succeeds in transitioning her to someone equal to the world she lives in and why her soft spot for Andy and her being a match for him causes her character change. It happens a little bit fast, but it works. She does great in the action too and she'll make a great Tomb Raider Laura Croft. The villain is good too. He feels classic with a terrifying plan to consider, but he and his henchmen don't ever feel as iconic as they could, and they go out rather anticlimactically. There is an undeniable fun factor, and the plot feels like Indiana Jones for the most part. Tying into the genius of Archimedes was really cool, even though the Fishers in Time has nothing but a throwaway explanation, if that, and how the actual dial works is completely glossed over where I missed it. I also don't think they flesh out enough how they figure out everything without works with the time travel and why they end up where they do. It's interesting, but it doesn't make a ton of sense. Maybe I just need to watch it again. However, I would have much preferred a movie about them chasing the spear that pierced Jesus Christ that was teased in the prologue. Felt way more intriguing to me as a Christian, but I appreciate they tried to tackle something different at the same time. I am shocked that they didn't use the time travel for more fan service. Part of me enjoys when films do that, and I wouldn't have been mad at it here depending on how it was used, but I do appreciate the restraint nonetheless. I, I know it sounds like I'm really railing on this movie and that I didn't like it, but honestly I did have a good time. Despite my terrible theater experience having a dark projector and it even cutting off at one point for over 10 minutes, only for the film to be rewound a few minutes, ridiculous. I was upset, almost with full care. There's a lot to like, and it's well made enough to have fun because I love this character. It gets a passable score because I find the approach flawed as well as some of how it was structured and many, many other things that just bug me about it, making it my least favorite of the bunch without a doubt. So while it gives a solid send off to the character, Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls was better. Part of me did sense the door will always remain open if they want with that final shot, but more so that the hat of Indiana Jones will always belong first and foremost to Harrison Ford. But also I feel like it partially belongs to Steven Spielberg and George Lucas who weren't involved in this one from the ground up. Take that as with what you will. I give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny three out of five stars. They really did save it with that ending, I think. If you haven't, please like this video. Consider subscribing while you're at it if you like my movie reviews. We'll try to hit all the big ones coming soon. And while we do it, remember, always look for the good.